Last time, we began going into Dragon Ball Super, with a good chunk of the cast getting their own new power-ups too. But they're not even at their peak of their strength yet, they still got a long way to go. So where do we go from here? We'll be seeing all that and more in part 4 of What If Mr. Satan Was Strong. A couple years pass. If you remember from before, I mentioned that Battle Gods happened way earlier on. Now we're at a point when Resurrection F is supposed to happen, so everything in between goes pretty differently, especially because Goku and Vegeta are already on Beerus' planet, and obviously Mr. Satan is there too. Gohan, Piccolo, and Videl all have their ultimate forms, and they're training with those. But given the relative peace time, I would still say that Pan's born during this time. Which brings us directly to a period where there isn't peace. Resurrection F. Frieza comes to Earth, and he stopped pretty quickly. I know this happens a lot in some of my scenarios, but Frieza's not really doing anything here when he's facing Ultimate Gohan, Ultimate Piccolo, and Ultimate Videl, who's actually really strong here in the scenario. Especially with three of them here, that's really overkill. And Frieza's just perplexed because, first of all, where are Goku and Vegeta, and second of all, who's that random woman fighting him? He's never seen her before. But he and his army are stopped really quickly. Especially because some of the other fighters go to help them, including Android 16 too. But Krillin and Shenhan and Roshi get to see a glimpse of their true power now. They didn't realize how strong these three have grown. But their strength right now is pretty tame in comparison to what's happening on Beerus' planet. Thankfully, this is an April Fool's what-if, so we can get a little bit more freedom with things that I do here. Don't worry, I'm not going to get too crazy, but you'll see what I mean in a bit. Because now we shift over to Beerus' planet. Mr. Satan's still training with the Saiyans, and he's bummed to not have any forms of his own, especially because Goku and Vegeta now have surpassed Super Saiyan God. Of course, Beerus didn't even know what that was in the first place, and they kind of unlocked it inadvertently. Wow, looks like he has three godly rivals, especially because with all the time they've been training there, they definitely have blue by now, and have even gone beyond that a bit too. Not to mention they had Super Saiyan 4, which they've kind of abandoned by now because they're focused on these godly forms, but now they're aiming to try and combine the power of Super Saiyan 4 somehow with blue. They're not really too sure how they'll do that, but whatever, they'll figure it out. Goku's also touched on blue Kyle Ken, and Vegeta's touched upon blue evolution. And meanwhile, this entire time, Mr. Satan hasn't really gotten any new forms. That doesn't mean he's gotten nothing though. But still, seeing this, he feels like he might be falling behind, although Whis tells him that's not true at all. And Beerus says he doesn't need new forms. He says those Saiyans rely on flashy forms for power, which Goku and Vegeta take offense to, but Beerus says Mr. Satan is special. In his base, he's strong as is. He still has no clue why that's the case, but it seems to be the case. Something about him just makes him powerful without having to transform at all, and despite him being an Earthling. It's even stranger because no other Earthlings are like this at all. Of course, there are some strong ones there. And with Videl as the only exception, even though strong ones don't have the great potential that Mr. Satan has, they're still trying to get to the bottom of what it truly is. Now we move to the Universe 6 tournament. The team here is Mr. Satan, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Videl. They actually have more than enough people to participate in the tournament. Plus, there's no need for Manaka because Beerus thinks Mr. Satan is motivated as is, and as for the two Saiyans, they're basically extra rivals for him, but they are growing pretty strong, and Mr. Satan's enough of a motivator for them too, so it looks like they're all good in that regard. And Beerus wants Mr. Satan to fight first, so he does. And he pretty much sweeps everybody. Now, the other fights aren't too crazy for him, and he's able to work around everyone's strength. And as for Megeta, I feel like Mr. Satan would be able to come up with an insult. He's definitely capable of trash talking. But as for Hit, that's the one really weird battle, because Hit obviously has his time skip. But this is where they get to see the true terrifying nature of Mr. Satan's power, and the true terrifying nature of an April Fool's what if. Mr. Satan doesn't transform at all. He showcases his full strength, and he believes he's gonna win here. At first against Hit, he's struggling, but somehow during the match, the tide just instantly turns. With Mr. Satan confident that he can counter this time skip, and at one point, Hit tries to use Time Skip, but then Mr. Satan perfectly counters it. And instantly, it's like Hit was never ahead at all. Mr. Satan defeats him and knocks him out of the ring, with Hit finding particular interest in Mr. Satan because how the hell did he do that? It didn't seem like he even knew what was happening with the Time Skip. And Mr. Satan thanks him for the fight but says it's the champion's secret. But now it looks like he's going beyond World Champ. Maybe he's a multiversal champ now. And Mr. Satan has the tournament recorded, with the footage eventually being released on Earth. Of course, they chop it up so no one realizes that they're fighting in a multiversal tournament, and that they don't know about the Super Dragon Balls and all the stakes here and everything, but they see Mr. Satan fighting a bunch of weird alien-looking dudes, and one guy that looks actually human. It just makes them love him even more. But all of this does have consequences. During this tournament, Mr. Satan was using his godly powers. He's innately powered by God Key now. And even though he wasn't using any sort of godly forms, when Zamasu's watching this on GodTube, he can clearly tell, especially because Mr. Satan's claiming that he's in the realm of gods now. Him bragging doesn't really help his case. Plus, on top of that, as Zamasu starts to watch more clips of him, not just from God Tube, but from whatever Earth has, this guy's using his godly power to just be the world champion of whatever. He doesn't know what he's the champ of, but he's making a real mockery of godly key, worse than Goku and Vegeta ever did. Not that he even knows who they are because they didn't get to fight here. So as Mr. Satan enjoys his victory lap, one day at home, he feels a bit strange as his body suddenly changes. Zamasu swaps bodies with him. He hasn't been on Earth in a bit, and being back here, he wanted to enjoy this, but now it looks like something weird's happening again. 
Also, since he's at his mansion, no one's actually around. No one even realizes what's going on just yet. Zamasu teleports in, ready to kill Mr. Satan, and Mr. Satan looks and sees himself staring back at him. He's a little confused for a bit, but then as Mr. Satan Black tries to attack him, he's able to block the attack. This really confuses Zamasu, but he keeps trying to attack, and Mr. Satan's able to actually fend it off, even while their bodies are swapped. And this gives Mr. Satan a chance to question him. Look, he doesn't know what's going on here, but he'll give this guy a chance to leave if he explains what's happening. And he has a pretty educated guess. Did this guy use the Dragon Balls or something to swap bodies with him because he was jealous of Mr. Satan's strength? And part of that's correct, although he didn't use the Dragon Balls, he used the Super Dragon Balls. And it's not because he was jealous of Mr. Satan's strength. But he is confused as to why Mr. Satan is still able to fight him off. And that's all Mr. Satan needed to know. This is a really unintended side effect of his power, and it's the perfect chance to actually show it off. You see, Mr. Satan says his power is not reliant on his body, just his mind. His confidence and pride, his nature as a fighter, that's what carries him. Zamasu understands nothing of what he's talking about. But he continues trying to fight, and he's not able to do anything with Mr. Satan's body. So Mr. Satan tries to show it off. It took them a while to get this, but eventually he, Beerus, and Whis got to the bottom of it, with some help from Goku and Vegeta too. A golden halo appears behind his head. Mr. Satan closes his eyes and envisions himself with amazing power. His overwhelming willpower and confidence in himself, it basically makes him as strong as he believes. This is what he calls the champion spirit, a state of being that's unique to him. Zamasu's amazed. Mr. Satan's insane potential doesn't come from his innate strength and such, but it comes from him believing his immense power. It took him a while to realize it. And while his body is actually strong, most of his strength just comes from his mind. He has no clue why or how, and they're still trying to get to the bottom of that specifically. But he explains to Zamasu, sure, that vessel that he's in is pretty strong right now because Mr. Satan has trained it and honed it a lot. But they simply swapped bodies. Even though Mr. Satan's in a different vessel, he's still Mr. Satan. His spirit is what empowers him, not his body. Zamasu tries to fight as much as possible, but Mr. Satan casually fends him off. And he just goes on a rant about his power too, trying to explain it and look cool. Even giving Zamasu a rundown of his history, and wondering if Fidel's able to do the same thing. Although she seems like she's different than him, and her strength is actually something that's innate within her physical body. And then he starts bragging to Zamasu about his daughter. She's great, and she's a great fighter. And he's grown quite fond of his son-in-law too. Zamasu's just perplexed as Mr. Satan rambles on about his personal life. He's not even talking about fighting anymore, he's just fighting casually. He doesn't even seem to care that his body's been swapped. It's like Mr. Satan's delusions of grandeur in the original story, they're actually reality here. And Zamasu's mortified. This is the power of the champ. This is the power of an April Fool scenario. This is the one person a body swap won't do anything to. And Mr. Satan knocks Zamasu out. Now, some of his power has been taken away because part of it did come from his physical strength, but most of it came from his mind, so he is still able to win here. But what now? He can't keep this body because no one will recognize him. And he can't kill Zamasu either because that's his body. And he tries his best to swap. He doesn't know how to do it, but he tries to swap his soul back. Whis and Beerus then come over because they were unearthed this entire time and they sense the fight going on. They see Mr. Satan unconscious on the ground, and the Supreme Kai of Universe 10, Zamasu. Beerus is immediately angered and asks him to explain. And Mr. Satan quickly blurts out an explanation, and it actually works thanks to Whis. Because from what he could tell, Mr. Satan's telling the truth. They actually did swap bodies somehow. Oh well, it's a shame that this happened. They're gonna have to inform the gods of Universe 10, and that's probably not gonna be a pretty sight. And Mr. Satan asks what they're supposed to do now. Well, even though the wish was granted by the Super Dragon Balls, Zamasu simply just wished to swap bodies. It's not like he's immune to the inverse. The issue is the Dragon Balls probably wouldn't be strong enough to affect Zamasu, so they could either get the Super Dragon Balls or Whis could just try to pull this off himself. Body swapping isn't something particularly hard, and for a guy who could resurrect people, Whis says he could probably figure out a way to reverse it himself. Beerus says he'll take Zamasu and he'll keep him under watch on his planet. And Mr. Satan's hoping that this will work, because otherwise he'll have to wait a year to get the Super Dragon Balls to reverse this. It's kind of weird to explain to the others, but he gets the help of Gohan, Piccolo, Videl, Goku, and Vegeta. This whole situation is really strange, and they want to reverse it quick. And it actually does work out. Vegeta finds it kind of weird, though. I mean, they saw that on Namek with Ginyu. Yeah, and Goku remembers it kind of well, too. Ah, uh, that gives him memories. But Goku just finds humor in the fact that body swapping's happening again. Zamasu is brought back to Universe 10, with Beerus and Whis escorting him there. And since the gods there were already alerted, Gowasu's there very disappointed, and Rumshi's there, too. And he actually does the deed this time, apologizing to Beerus. Which Beerus actually finds humor in, seeing another god of destruction bow to him. He tries to not laugh, but he accepts it. Back in Universe 7, Mr. Satan explains to Whis what happened, and he got to see more of his champion spirit in action. Up until very recently, he had no clue how to control it willingly, because he didn't realize it was a thing. And now Whis is getting more info on it too. It seems there's a physical limit to his body, so it's not like he could just imagine himself as strong as Zeno or someone. But there's a certain extent that he could power himself up just due to his imagination, essentially. It's similar to Ultra Ego in a sense, 
Not that they know what that is, but using it here as an example, with that, a battle spirit could fuel somebody with Ultra Ego. So think of it like that, but instead with Champion Spirit, it's based on confidence and willpower, which is somewhat similar but also doesn't need a direct fight to empower him, and he's not going to get stronger from taking attacks, plus the obvious fact that it's not using a guy to destruction's power, but his indomitable will carries him. If he believes he could win against opponents without crazy powers, he can't actually win against them. Beerus' will and confidence was so overwhelming that it didn't work on him. Also, Beerus knows this is an April Fool's what if, so those gags don't pertain to him. Plus, his stamina and key are always finite, so he's gonna need to train his body to actually further this power. But this is a godly power for him, an ultra form for him if you will, even though it's not really a form. There's also some other consequences to this arc, because future Zamasu is never influenced by Black. Since Mr. Satan Black was essentially the Goku Black here, this basically negates the entire arc. Mr. Satan killing Zamasu doesn't split the timelines and create a quote-unquote new one. I'll throw the chart up here on screen so you can kind of get what I mean here because it's always kind of weird to explain, at least without a visual aid, so this timeline where Goku Black is born is where we are. This branched off one doesn't happen, and since there's no messing with timelines here without Mr. Satan Black going to the future timeline, none of that happens and future Zamasu is never influenced by him. So Trunks' timeline is completely safe, relative to the fact that it's not completely destroyed. There's still a lot of stuff going on there. Rip Shin, Kibito, and Beerus. The others are all still furthering their power too. We're getting pretty ridiculous here, and everyone's going to be stronger as is. So, for Goku and Vegeta, they're still struggling to combine Super Saiyan 4 with their godly powers, but they're kind of going about it differently now. Seeing what Gohan and Videl did with their power and how they used Ultimate to unlock their latent potential, they try and go a different route too. Also, I don't want to do one of those Super Saiyan 4 blue things here again, so we're introducing something new here. As Goku and Vegeta work on it, they remember the limit-breaking properties of Super Saiyan 4. They don't simply need to combine Great Ape with Super Saiyan Blue. Rather, they want to focus on the innate boost that Super Saiyan 4 gives them, the limit-breaking principle that lies beneath it. It's a very specific concept to the form that they're trying to grasp, then utilize, then stabilize, then maintain. Then use that knowledge to put it into Super Saiyan Blue. And with Vegeta touching upon Blue Evolution, he wonders if that ties into it somehow, but he's not quite sure yet, so he still has to work on it. But he's not the only one going about this. Back on Earth, Gohan and Videla keeping up with their training too as well. Videl being the biggest influence on Gohan, of course. As you can see throughout this entire story, she's been way more motivated, and she's the more dominant one here. Which means what she does, Gohan does. She wears the pants in the relationship. She doesn't know if she could access the champion spirit that Mr. Satan has, but that is what she wants. And she wonders if Gohan could go beyond his power too, somehow. And Piccolo tries to work on his own as well, because he remembers Shenron mentioning something extra, but he's not quite sure what he meant by that. Some more time does pass, and eventually we do get to the Tournament of Power, which will be a perfect opportunity for everyone to show their powers off. The team would probably be something like Mr. Satan, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Videl, 16, 17, 18, and Krillin. And since he's already the champ, Mr. Satan could be the leader here. And with a little bit of passage of time between the Mr. Satan Black stuff and here, there have been some changes, but we'll be seeing more of that in the next part. This is where we'll leave off for now. What did you guys think about this part? And what do you think is going to happen next time, especially with everyone's different powers that they're working on? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.